Joining us on the show this evening is a very special guest, Pimal Jalan, uh, in our special segment, uh, 100 Day Agenda, where we get uh, uh, top economists, CEOs and thought leaders to chart out the 100 Day Agenda for the new government. And Mr. Jalan, there is a fear in the, that the banking system is staring at a massive crisis due to mounting MP NPAs. Uh, how do you think should the new government resolve this? No, but that's an important issue. You know, there is no easy answer to that. Because it is the public sector banks which have much higher NPAs than they say the private sector banks. Why is it? Is it because they are financing investment, low productivity investments and so on and so forth at the instance of government or on the basis of country's needs and therefore there are NPAs. Now, if that be so, then the government should transfer more capital to them and uh, I, you know, it's not, in the, it's not very easy to answer what should be done about NBA, NPA. We've been trying to capital restructuring of capital. But the main issue to ask is what is it that the public sector banks, who, who appoints the chairperson? Is chairperson accountable or not accountable? I mean, those are, I mean, very big issues. And uh, if you can't resolve them, then we should try and reduce the amount of public stake that we in, have in our public sector banks. And, uh, you know, I mean, and you can also make it uh, uh, quoted in the stock exchanges and say that I will, be, I will be distributing it at the retail level rather than at the wholesale level. I mean, there are various answers to this which you have to, but they are difficult. By no means are they easy. If the government decides that the public sector bank should spend money on, say, investment, which is long gestation, and we can't implement those projects, then somebody has to put in the money to meet, meet that cap. And if it has been done because of government priority, then government should provide that capital. Sorry about it, there is no easy answer. There are no easy answers ever, Dr. Jalan, are there? But let me turn focus to inflation. Yes, it is on a downward spiral now, but has been the biggest problem for the last few years, not just for policymakers, but people like you and me. What can the new government realistically do to address the supply side constraints? Because the RBI policy has not really been able to rein in inflation as much as Governor Rajan would have wanted to. You know, again, a very important uh, point here that we have large stocks of food grains, am I right? That why is it that, and we have large uh, foreign exchange reserves, is that, is that right? If that is so, you know, unlike say the 70s or the 80s or earlier part of our history, then why is it that we can't control food inflation? And the main source of inflation is food. You know, I'm not talking about you can't, you can't control droughts. You can't control, you know, if there, is, um, if there is excess rain or something, then productivity can't be controlled. But you can control the supply side of food availability. Why is it that the prices should go up the way they are? Why can't, uh, you know, that we have large stocks of food? Why can't you sell it in the retail market or wholesale market? Tell me. And if you need to import oil, why can't we import? We can import. So in terms of resources, you have the resources to tackle inflation. And although it is a more difficult aspect and it's a broader aspect than monetary policy, but we have the resources to be able to tackle it and we should do it. Dr. Jalan, investment has come to a complete halt and that has really stalled growth even further. The question then is, what can be done to revive investment? We did set up a CCI. Should states be a part of that? Because eventually they have to give the clearances. An extremely important issue you have raised. You know, to my mind, it seems that uh, if you can have the largest, freest, fairest elections in human history, why is it that we can't uh, invest what we say we will invest? Why is it that it takes 30 clearances to get investment moving? Why can't you announce the policy for investment in advance? For example, power sector, you know, whatever it is. And then leave it to an institutional independent body. I mean, election commission, would you have had the kind of elections that we have had if it had to report to home ministry? Just say, I'm not that the home ministry is bad, but you don't need ministerial clearances at every step. So, Therefore, my biggest uh, advice, biggest sort of not advice is wrong word, my biggest concern is that we should reduce ministerial interference in implementation, in administration. And instead of that, you announce policy. If you don't want investment in port, say so. If you don't want investment in highways, say so. But once you've decided that, yes, I want investment, that we have want investment, then clarify the policy and leave it to the National Highway Authority to implement it.
That's the best. Rather than reporting to the highway ministry, road ministry, then uh, the finance ministry. Why? What for? Right. Uh, Dr. Sir, let's also talk about some of the reforms that should be on top of the uh, top of the list for the new government. GST has been talked about as a game changer. UPA government uh, came close to clinching a deal, but politics came in the way. Do you believe that the new government can realistically implement GST and what really needs to be done to get there? No, the short answer is that it's a very desirable thing to do, but I don't know whether the new government can do it. But if it can't do it, it should take a position that I can't do it. And then do whatever is the back, you know, go back and implement the policies as they were before. I mean, there is no, or pass an ordinance, revise the tax laws, I mean, so that the state taxation power are independent of the central government's uh, taxation powers. Mm, you know, but you have to take a view. You can't just leave it in the limbo, you know, the GST. It has, how, how long has it been pending? And you don't know. I mean, then the states have different views. Say Bihar government, UP government, and let us say it is their power to be, have differences. That's good. That's okay. But we can't just continue saying that we are going to do this, we are going to do this, we are going to do this. If we can't do this in, say, the next three months or six months, then let us decide that we won't do it. We will just revise the tax law. Let's also talk about financial sector reforms, Dr. Jalan. Um, what do you think should the government uh, do to deepen bond markets? Should that also be a focus area of the new government? Of course, that's one of the more important, uh, I mean, you know, in terms of the tasks that we face. I mean, the development of the bond market, the corporate bond market, is an important, uh, is an important priority in terms of diversifying financial assets. And uh, I think we should do it. I mean, and uh, uh, similarly, simplifying rules and laws governing IPOs and governing raising capital in the, in the stock exchanges is also important. And, uh, I mean, that... I mean, without reducing accountability or shareholder power over corporates. Dr. Jalan, before we let you go, what about privatization? It seems to be this dirty, bad word for political parties across the spectrum. The real privatization happened about 12 years back. What do you think should be the government's agenda as far as privatization is concerned? No, you know, you must accept the fact that politics trumps economics. And there is no way, if the political class doesn't like Privatize, so called privatization, then there is no way in which you can move unless you are prepared to take the risk on this basis that you are privatizing not to benefit the rich or the corporates, but to benefit the poor or the, you know, the ordinary person of India. Then you can privatize. And if you privatize, and there is still the politicians are not in favor of it because of their political interests, then you have to uh, pass, you know, you have to pass an ordinance and call for elections. But it requires tough action. But ultimately, it's politics which would determine it. If politics doesn't support the welfare of the people or something which is in the interest of the people, not the corporates, by the way. I mean, that's the most important criterion that we have to use. And... Uh, then we should do it, simply do it. And if, uh, you know, you have to call for an ordinance, we, pa we pass ordinances so often. We pass, con make constitutional changes, more than 100 we have made. So whatever needs to be done, India should do it. I mean, we are the largest democracy, largest free democracy in the world. Why can't we do it, which is in the interest of the people?